Hey everyone, you're watching my video series on AWS Lambda and in this video I'm going to show you how you can use Lambda to write data to DynamoDB. Okay, so here I am in my code editor. I'm using Visual Studio Code for a change. Um, this is something new that I'm trying out. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to write a Lambda function that connects to DynamoDB and then write something to it. And for this video series, we're going to write a guestbook system. Yes, the good old guestbook, a page on your website where people can leave you a message. So we're going to use Lambda and DynamoDB to store and process all the messages of these people. So here you see a basic Lambda function. This is just an empty function uh, with one console log indicating that the function has uh, started and then one handler uh, where we can execute our code. So I'm gonna start by loading all our dependencies in. And the first dependency I'm gonna load is the AWS SDK. So I'm gonna require the uh, AWS SDK. And the next thing that I'm going to load is the DynamoDB document client. This is an extended version, really, uh, of the regular or, or the old, the original DynamoDB uh, SDK. It's a little bit easier to use, and so that's why we're going to use it here. So I'm going to say constant doc client is a new AWS dot DynamoDB dot document client, and I'm going to give it a parameter. I'm going to say that my region is EU West 1. Okay, so those are our dependencies. Let's now go into our function. And this function is going to write something to DynamoDB, but we first have to define what it needs to write. So I'm gonna create an object with the parameters of our write. And I'm gonna say that we wanna write an item. And that item is gonna contain two fields. The first field is the date field, and I'm gonna pick for that the current date. And the second field is a message. And this message is gonna be, I love your website, for example. Now, in the real world, you would fill in the message with something coming from um, the event, a user inputted value. But right now we're gonna leave this uh, hard coded just to demonstrate how everything works. Now we also need to tell DynamoDB where to write this item. So I'm gonna say table name is guestbook. Now I've already created this table on DynamoDB and I will show you the table uh, later on. Okay, so now we got the parameters for the doc line to put something in our DynamoDB database. So let's now actually do it. So I'm gonna say doc lines and I'm gonna say put and what are we going to put? We're gonna put in our params object in there and then we're gonna give it a callback and this callback is gonna receive an error or some data, hopefully not an error. And so we're gonna say if there is an error, you can call the Lambda callback function with the error and without the message. And if there, whoops, and if there's not an error, you do the same, but you don't pass along an error, but you pass along just the data. Okay, so that is our function. I'm gonna save this file, I'm gonna deploy it, and let's check out our DynamoDB table. Okay, so here we are in the DynamoDB console, and as you can see, I just have one table, uh, and this is called guestbook. And let me just walk you through what's in here. It's very, very, very basic. In fact, I don't really recommend using this kind of structure for a, a production or a guest book. So please don't do that. But for the purpose of this video, it's just fine. So what I've done is I've created a table named guest book and I've added uh, the date, a number, as the primary partition key. And that's really it. I don't have a sort key, you don't have anything else, you don't have secondary indexes or whatever. It just uses a date as a primary key. I know that's not very unique if you want to have a very, very, very high volume traffic guest book, but for this video, it will surely do. So I just use the date as a partition key here. I know that's not very unique, but for the purpose of this video, that's just fine. So let me go into items here. And as you can see, I don't have any items here. That's all fine. Now let's go to Lambda. And I've actually deployed the function that we just wrote already. So let's go to Lambda. And here in the function is called DynamoDB write. 
and I can test it here by just clicking test, but that is gonna fail because by default, Lambda does not have permissions to access DynamoDB. So let me quickly go back to uh, DynamoDB. Let's open up a new tab because we're gonna need the identifier for our table uh, to configure the permissions. So let's go back to our Lambda function here. So I've deployed this function with Apex and Apex automatically creates an execution role for our function. And here we can see this is the DynamoDB underscore Lambda underscore function role. Now we have to attach rights to this role in order for our Lambda function to be able to access other AWS services. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Let's go to services, let's go to IAM. I'm opening again a new tab here because I'm gonna need to switch a little bit back and forth between these consoles. And I'm gonna to go to roles here, and I've got a bunch of roles here, but I'm gonna pick the DynamoDB Lambda function role, the one that our function is currently using, and I'm gonna attach a new policy. This time I'm not gonna give it full access to my DynamoDB account, I'm just gonna give it access to my guestbook table. So let's create a new inline policy here. Let's use the policy generator, and we're gonna allow the actions on DynamoDB, so let's scroll, Amazon, DynamoDB, there you go. And we're gonna say we're gonna allow all actions on DynamoDB, but we're gonna limit it to just our guest book. So here we can define an Amazon resource name, and if you go to the DynamoDB console and you scroll down and go to table details, you can see there's our ARN for the guest book table, just copy that, paste it in here. Let's add this statement. Let's go to the next step. It's now generating the policy for us and there you have it. This is our policy where we basically say our function is allowed to do any action on DynamoDB but just on our guestbook table. Okay, so that looks good. Let's apply this policy. And now we're ready to test our functions. Let's go to the Lambda console here. Let's click test and let this function run. There you go, execution result succeeded. We don't have any output, that's just fine. Let's now go to DynamoDB and let's check our table if something has been written to it. So let's go to our table, let's go to items. And there you go, we have the date, we have the message, just as we defined in our code. So that's it for this video. In the next video, I'll show you how you can query DynamoDB so that you can read back the data that we just wrote to it. I hope you find this topic interesting and if you do, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to this channel or follow me on Twitter.